Hi, this is Brad Constantine, and this is a podcast recording of the Doctrine and Covenants of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Even though this is not an official recording of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, every effort has been made to be as doctrinally and historically accurate as possible. Every day a new section of the Doctrine and Covenants will be released. I hope that you'll visit this often and be able to share this uh, with your friends. Thank you. Hi, and welcome back to the Doctrine and Covenants podcast. This will be for section 91. Something you've all looked forward to, I know. I'll read the heading first. Revelation given through Joseph Smith the prophet at Kirtland, Ohio, March the 9th, 1833. The prophet was at this time engaged in the translation of the Old Testament. Having come to that portion of the ancient writings called the Apocrypha, he inquired of the Lord and received this revelation. Now, how many of you actually have a copy of the Apocrypha so you can look it up? (laughs) Not many, probably. Okay. Doctrine of Covenants 91 was revealed one day after section 90. The prophet was at that time engaged in the revision of the Bible. The Bible from which he was making his corrections contained the Apocrypha. Thus he inquired of the Lord as to whether he should revise those books. This revelation indicated that it was not necessary for him to do so. Apocryphal books include 1st and 2nd Esdras, Tobit, Judith, the rest of the chapters of Esther, Wisdom of Solomon, Wisdom of Jesus the son of Zirach or Ecclesiasticus, Baruch and the Epistle of Jeremiah, additional parts of Daniel, including the Song of the Three Holy Children, the History of Susanna, and the History of the Destruction of Bel and the Dragon, and the Prayer of Manasseh's First and Second Maccabees. So I hope that was helpful. All right. Verse 1, Verily thus saith the Lord unto you concerning the Apocrypha, there are many things contained therein that are true, and it is mostly translated correctly. An apocryphal writing, explained Hugh Nibley, is one that has been accepted as inspired scripture by any Christian or Jewish group at any time. When such texts are brought together and examined, they are found almost without exception to reveal all the characteristics of real scripture. The manuscripts that contain them are just as old as and sometimes older than many of those of the canonical books, i.e. the books of the Bible. They are found in the same places and conditions they were anciently put to the same uses. They talk about the same things in the same terms and take and make the same claim to divine origin. It is clear, for example, that the Qumran community considered the Book of Jubilees, the Testament of the Twelve Patriarchs, the Apocalypse of, the Apocalypse of Baruch, the Assumption of Moses, the Psalms of Solomon, and many other writings just as sacred as anything in the Bible. So closely, in fact, do these documents resemble the Scriptures and each other that, that to this day there is no agreement among their, plan, among their pious readers or among the specialists who study them as to what is exactly apocryphal in the Bible and what is, and what is really biblical in the Apocrypha. The word Apocrypha has been used so differently that its proper meaning is often confused. This confusion arises partly from the ambiguity of the ancient usage of the word, and partly from its modern application to a group of books associated with the intertestament period. Entomologically, the word means secret or hidden. Some have suggested that the content of these books is of such a nature that they ought to be kept hidden because they contain mysteries or esoteric lore too profound or sacred to be trusted in the uninitiated. Others have suggested that the term was used by those who held such books should be kept hidden because of their spurious or heretical nature. Thus the term had both an honorable and a derogatory meaning appended to it. According to general usage today, the Apocrypha is the designation given to a collection of 14 or 15 books written during the last two centuries before Christ and the first century of the Christian era. None of these books is included in the Hebrew canon. All of them, however, with the exception of 2nd Esdras, are found in the Greek version of the Old Testament known as the Septuagint. And that was by Joseph Fielder McConkie. Verse 2. There are many things contained therein that are not true, which are interpolations by the hands of men. The act of foisting or to pass off something worthless as genuine, a word or passage into the manuscript or book. Verse 3, Verily I say unto you that it is not needful that the Apocrypha should be translated. Therefore, whoso readeth it, let him understand, for the Spirit manifesteth truth. And whoso is enlightened by the Spirit shall obtain benefit therefrom. And whoso receiveth not by the Spirit cannot be benefited. Therefore, it is not needful that it should be translated. Amen. While it does warn against things that have been added to the Apocrypha by designing men, this revelation does not reject it as being untrue. 
It simply states that it must be discerned by the Spirit. This principle ap applies to the reading of Scripture as well as all other books. Obviously, to gain any real value from a study of apocryphal writings, the student must first have an extended background of gospel knowledge, a comprehensive understanding of the standard works of the church, plus the guidance of the Spirit. And that was by Bruce R. McConkie. I bear testimony that these things are true, and I uh, hope that you'll come back again. And uh, if you have a copy of the Apocrypha, just be careful as you read it. <laughs> Talk to you later. See you next time. Bye.